Thanks for checking out this episode of Help! I'm Turning Into My Dad. Now, if you want to hear the entire episode and get early access to all future episodes, as well as the entire back catalog, all you've got to do is go to patreon.com slash becomingmydad. And for just $5 a month, you'll get access to all of our episodes, as well as early releases of every future episode. That's patreon.com slash becomingmydad. I can't imagine. I'm not imaginary. That's why I'm not an actor. Caitlin, if you do a good job, I'll pay you $20. Dad, oh my God. Dad, I'm annoyed. You're annoying me. Dad, stop. Help, I'm turning into my dad. I'm Tio Nico, and you don't sound excited this week. <laughs> no, you're like, welcome to another episode of this thing that I hate doing, and I'm only doing because my uncle's making me. That's way better. You know the music that we're hearing right now underneath us? It gets flagged by stupid YouTube every week that we upload our episode. Every single week. And it's... Well, I know, but I own the rights to the music through Storyblocks. So every time I upload, it gets flagged. So I got to send in the copyright um, thing, dispute. And within minutes, it's gone. Like, they take it away. But, like, we're going to use this song every week. So is it possible, copyright person, that you can not strike our videos oh it's so annoying but anyway so we'll fade that down now and uh we can actually open the podcast so um we've talked about before that we love reality tv shows right? love i love it oh we watch so many of them so mm-hmm. there was one that was on um in like the early 2000s Do you remember johnny k plus eight of course okay so the goslins They did their first episode because they did like Dark Side of like the 90s, and I think they did like another one that was like maybe the I don't know, beginning of Dark Side or something. Okay. And um, so this one was the Dark Side of the 2000s, and it was a new series. And they did their first episode on John and Kate. So they had John and two of the kids, Colin and Alexis. No, not Alexis. Well, two of those kids yeah. ha- will see John, the rest will not. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, they all went on this show and they were like exposing it, right? So they were kind of in the same era as the Duggars. Um, I watched both shows, Johnny Kate and the Duggars. Um, obviously, Johnny Kate had a nasty divorce and then Kate plus eight kind of took over as like the show. Mm-hmm. Yep, and then he wasn't there and not even mentioned. He says he spent like millions of dollars trying to get like custody of the kids or whatever. Um, and like this big long like, court battle ever since. They got divorced, so yeah. So yeah, they kind of did like a little tell-all. And but one thing that I thought was interesting, the whole like episode was interesting. But the one thing I like wrote down was there was a pop culture professor at Syracuse University, Robert Thompson. Um, the intro of the show, everybody who went on had to say, um, "How do you spend your two thousands?" So he says, you know, <laughs> "I spent my two thousand. Like my name is Robert Thompson. Like I work at the Syracuse University." Um, and he goes, I spent my 2000s never missing an episode of Survivor, The Bachelor, or Here Comes Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Honey Boo Boo, all the way. Oh so yeah, that, I just thought that was funny that that's how he like introduced himself to the world. It was like how he spent his 2000s. Uh-huh. But yeah, he like taught pop culture, so he like did a little like blurb or whatever about the family and just like added to their story. But overall, it was a really interesting episode, but that was just one thing that I was like, I got to tell that on the podcast. Well, thanks to one of your subscriptions, I have been able to watch a show called uh, 90 Day Journey. Oh, you've been telling me about that. <laughs> that show is so good. Well, because I love reality TV so much, and it's hard to find a good one, you know? like So what they did was, apparently, some of these couples were on the 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. But what they've done is they've taken those episodes, and then they've extended them so that they have now followed these couples for years, mm-hmm. right? And so the first one I watched was a woman who had a young daughter 
and she was found this guy in England through a singing app. In England? Right. And she's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh my God. Yeah. So she starts uh, talking with this guy and later finds out she's pregnant with not the, the seven-year-old daughter's daddy, but a different daddy, but not the guy in England. Okay. So she's got like three. now she's got to tell the guy in England that she's pregnant with a baby. So he's oh, like, Chris. he's like, oh, that's all. Right. That's all. That's cool. I'm good with that. He's totally fine with being a dad to this kid who's not born yet. So he. Apparently that didn't work out. He, he well, I guess he's MIA. And she doesn't hold him accountable. They create their own drama. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this guy um, then decides that he wants to be a part of this kid's life and be this kid's dad. So he's going to come over from England to Albuquerque for the birth. Well, guess what? He can't get a visa because he's a felon. <laughs> so then he's got to tell her that um, he beat up some guys in a bar and ended up going to jail for this assault. And so now he can't leave England. And um, so she ends up having the baby with him on FaceTime. And then she goes over to England. To No, it's I can't get a visa. So um, she ends up going over there and he they start getting close or whatever. Well, now they get married over in England to try and help him get the green card to come over here. Yes. Well, not, but since he's a felon, um, it's not an easy thing, like because they've got to think that he's not going to reoffend here. Right. So anyway, uh, long story short, they end up married for two years. The show, what I like about Journey of 30 Days, by the way, is that they follow these couples, 90 days, whatever, um, for a long period of time. So now, like, yeah, episode six is like two years in the future from when we started. And uh, he's still in England. And now she's lost her job. But they still haven't reviewed the green card application. So now she has to... She has to have a way to support him, though, and now she lost a job. So if they review the application now, it's going to get automatically but denied. How does she support it? If she's in the United States and he's in England, mm -hmm. is she earning euros in the United States? No, 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 no. She, <laughs> no, but she's supposed to have a job enough to support him for up to 10 years after somebody comes here. Like, you have to be responsible. Oh, wait, so he's here? Not yet. Oh, he, he's not here yet. No. Oh, okay. But now that she lost her job, I that see. he might not be able to get here. I'm telling you, these stories are captivating. You can't even make this crap up. No. <laughs> and then real quick, I'm not going to go into the whole story. That one was the first one I watched. So then I'm hooked, right? I am oh, yeah. I'm into it. So yeah, the next one I watch is this guy who's got this Russian bride. And the first time that she's going to come over here, he uh, or she's, he's supposed to go to Russia to pick her up, apparently. Well, they get in a fight. So she cancels his plane ticket over to Russia. <laughs> Has the password to his phone, so she he she resets his phone while he's on the phone with her. His phone just restarts because she deleted it. Yes, from Russia. And so he's like, I don't know if this is a good idea to move forward with this or not. No, dude. No, it's not. His whole. I know. Would you like, do you want to know what the fight was about, though? Yes. <laughs> they were fighting because he refused to buy her a $10,000 Chanel purse. <laughs> that was the fight. Oh, I didn't mean to snort, but <laughs> the show's off the hook, guys. It's 90 Day Journey oh on Discovery Plus. Check it out. So good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, so anyway, I know that we have both had our um, fun with Facebook lately. Uh, I know that you've got a situation that you made you kind of chuckle. The one that makes me laugh is the fact that what drives me nuts more than anything on social media is the fact that when you click on something, it now will show you 12 more of the same thing you just clicked on, even if it was by accident. So I... 
suggest this to me anymore. They're because they never listen when you do something. They never listen. I don't like this. I oh, clicked well, here's more anyways. I clicked on one article mm-hmm. about inside like King Tut's tomb or something like that. <laughs> do you know how many dead mummy pictures I have on my Facebook feed right now? <laughs> it's uncomfortable. I'm getting like the you fact well, I don't think they did that then because they're talking about how this one woman whose picture they unwrapped this mummy and now I've got this 50-year-old woman from 139 BC etched in my mind of how dead she is and how preserved she was and the fact that she had all her organs inside and even still had blood in her veins. Like they could totally... Yeah, they could totally clone her. My point is, though, is I didn't want to see that. I was in it for the jewels of King Tut. And now I've got dead bodies everywhere. Right. It's haunting my dreams. So funny. Did you dream about King Tut last night? No, but I did dream of dead mummies, like finding them and haunting me. So then the one story that I found out today was there's a hotel in your area where your dad lives that is infested know, with I snakes. I, saw that. I, I didn't I, dare I, click on the article no, I, because I just read the comments because that one came up in my feed too. And like other people were like tagging other people. They're like, Oh my god, this snake hotel, you should go stay here. <laughs> <laughs> and the one like like there were it was very like Catch opposite. ten, your room is free. <laughs> <laughs> and the other people were, were like, I never want to step foot anywhere near that hotel ever again. No, I don't even want to step foot in your town again. <laughs> but I didn't dare click on it because do you know what I'm going to get then? 50 pictures of snakes. No, thank you because snakes haunt my dreams. <laughs> people, they don't have legs and they can move. That is the devil. Speaking of being marketed to on Facebook, I just, sometimes it's really funny what they market to you. Like when you click on King Tut and then you get pictures of old ladies <laughs> from 139 BC. But I, my Facebook knows my age. I am 19 years old. I'm in college. And they marketed to me a Forbes article with the literal title, How to Restart an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you invented how to do that. <laughs> Since I was five years old, don't tell me I don't know how to restart an iPhone. Wow. They think you're an idiot. They really do. But this is a quote from the article. It says, restarting is a helpful tool to clear cache, enhance speed, and improve iPhone performance. Why would that be suggested to me? I'm not 75 years old. No. And even 75-year-olds, I feel like, know how to restart their iPhone. Look, you are a person who knows anytime it, something's running slowly, poorly, or whatever, whether it be a Roku or your smart TV, you unplug it and plug it back in. Yeah, and that almost always fixes the problem. Almost always. And if it doesn't help, you've got bigger problems on your hands. <laughs> Just in case you're joining us for the first time, we are an uncle and a niece podcast team. You get the old person perspective <laughs> And the young person perspective, you get the grouchy old man turning into his father. And then you get the daughter who's also complaining about life and turning into her father. So we're trying to help you not become what we are becoming slowly here on this podcast. So it's help. Uh, I'm turning into my dad. Quote, fake news. Fake news. You are fake news. It's all fake news. Fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. It's all fake news. So what story really ticked you off this week? Like, what are you really complaining about and not happy with? I Hit me with your best shot. to talk about the uh, Colleen Ballinger story. I don't even know who that is. Wait a minute, that annoying person who ended up on like Nickelodeon television shows? Yeah, she had a Netflix show on, uh, called Caterers Back Off. Kate Overton watches that constantly. It's one of the worst TV shows I've ever seen. It's so, and she just like talks on her annoying Miranda Sings. So show. she's not Miranda. Her name is really Colleen. Ballinger. Okay, go for it. So she was accused of inappropriate conduct with minors. 
To hear the rest of the story and the rest of the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash becomingmydad. And for just $5 a month, you'll get access to our entire back catalog as well as early access to every future episode. Support Nick and Lindsay and this podcast by going to patreon.com slash becomingmydad. Can't wait to tell you the rest of the story over on Patreon.